today we're going to talk about seven benefits of migrating from ship gear to Starship. My name is Chris Lettner. I'm a sales executive with the technologies and I'll be taking you through the presentation today. The technologies has been in business since uh, the late 80s for 32 years and have a total customer base of about 10,000 customers. Uh, we work with uh, both UPS and FedEx as certified uh, solution providers and we've been partnering with McCullough since the early 90s. And a few uh, differences here between the two products. Um, so starting at the top, you have the user interface. Um, with Shipgear, you're using either the <clears throat> excuse me, UPS WorldShip or FedEx Ship Manager application to manage all of your transactions with. That uh, basically has a standalone system with uh, hooks into the ODBC tools to move the order data back and forth. And that is parcel only. With Starship, that's uh, multi-mode, multi-carrier. So you have a single user interface, one database of all your history to manage uh, your different modes of transportation, both parcel and freight. Uh, Starship offers you hooks into the McCola line items, so you can bring all the product information over. Uh, with Shipgear, that's basically just order header information. We use the line items to link into any commodities uh, that need to show up on paperwork, things like packing lists, export documents, bills of lading, hazmat paperwork, or if you're doing EDI shipments where you need to tell the trading partner exactly what the contents of the packages are, this opens up a lot of options uh, to give the, uh, the user the ability to pack items, uh, do that fulfillment, and then uh, display that information however you need to. Uh, we have hooks into a number of different third-party applications. Uh, so with Starship, you have uh, options for hooking into WMS solutions. We play nice with uh, the Macola WMS, WISIS. Um, you also uh, have options for other uh, third-party applications through custom SQL integration as well. Shipgear is basically, it is what it is, uh, UPS, FedEx only. Rate shopping, since you have everything on one screen, you have the ability to do a cost comparison between all of your various carriers look at time and transit and make an educated decision about how you want to get the product there. With Shipgear, you're in two different applications. You'd have to open up the transaction twice and there's really no rate shopping capabilities there. Starship also has batch processing. So if you have weights and inventory and uh, you've defined packaging within the system, you can bring over a range of orders, batch process those so you can get uh, multiple transactions processed all at the same time. You also have the ability to consolidate records uh, so you can have one shipment associated with multiple sales transactions. Shipgear is just a single sales transaction. Uh, we also have uh, the ability to interface with EDI solutions. So many of the, uh, the different EDI applications out there we have uh, integrations with. We can also produce the 128 labels out of Starship, assign the serialized container IDs. Again, Shipgear has no hooks into those types of platforms. E-commerce, uh, we have the ability to link into various marketplaces and shopping carts. Ship gear, of course, nothing there. Then you have the post office. Discounted rates are available as a standard option with Starship. You get the free postage account available with Starship out of the box. Ship gear, you just have the UPS and FedEx options. So again, if you're just using UPS and FedEx, single carrier, parcel only, great solution. There may be some other options there that Starship could interest you in. That's why we're here today. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of those other modules that are available. So your workflow is becoming ever more complex. You're getting orders from multiple sources. Uh, you may need to add additional solutions as your business grows and your fulfillment process becomes more complicated. That's where Starship comes in giving you the ability to have total control over the entire supply chain from the point that you take the order, whether it's coming in from a shopping cart or an e-commerce platform online, uh, from EDI orders, having electronic POs dumped into McCola, if you're using a WMS in order to manage the pick, the pack, the fulfillment. And then we kind of tie all those different systems together with one hub using Starship to kind of manipulate all of the shipping data and then update the various systems that need the results. 
talk a little bit about the various carriers that are available at Starship. You have all of the traditional parcel carriers that you may be familiar with. Of course, you have the post office that comes standard with Starship. UPS, FedEx, we have DHL for your international shipments. We have some regional carriers like Speedy in the Midwest and OnTrack on the West Coast. And as you can see here from the logos, there's a ever-growing list of uh, LTL options that are available to you. Uh, so we have national carriers covered with about 85% of the traffic uh, volume of LTL that goes through the country uh, with direct integration options for those various carriers. We also have partnered up with a number of uh, 3PL or third-party logistics companies to give you an array of rates if you want to work with the broker. So we're working with CH Robinson, Freight Quote, and Worldwide Express. If there's a particular carrier that uh, you don't see here, that doesn't mean that you can't process those shipments through Starship. You have uh, bill of lading capabilities for just manual processing, uh, where you can still call up the carrier, visit their website, and run the shipment through Starship. You can scan in pro numbers, capture freight, and still use that to move data back and forth from Macola. There's also some hosted options with the TMS that we're integrated to. Um, you have the Zara Light and Rateware from SMC3 as options. Uh, so always uh, looking for additional carriers. That list expands over time. So if you don't see your particular carrier there, we're tracking requests. Feel free to contact either myself or your customer account manager. And we'd be happy to talk with you about options for other carriers that aren't directly supported. As I mentioned, Starship has built-in rates with the post office. So if you switch over to Starship, you'll have access to USPS and discount rates, which are comparable to commercial plus pricing. Uh, these are typically rates that are only extended to higher volume shippers. By virtue of the fact that you're using Starship, you have access to these discounted rates, whether you ship 10 packages or 1,000 packages. You're part of a buying collective. All the Starship users have the ability to uh, leverage better rates uh, through our uh, postal partner, uh, Visible Supply Chain. So you can see here, um, yeah, just off the bat, you have uh, some, some basic rates and some good savings from the post office. We can also offer you deeper discounts if you look at some of the packaging and uh, the sizes of the boxes. So we can do a no-cost analysis for you to help you decide if uh, the post office is a viable option for some of your volume. Uh, you have programs to look at the uh, flat rate envelopes, cubic pricing, where it's based on the size of the package, or if you're doing a higher volume of cubic um, packages, those savings are even deeper. So you can see as you change the packaging, the price goes down. In this example here, you can see you're saving you know, quite a bit off the retail rate just by putting it in a different type of container. As I mentioned, we have that no-cost uh, shipping analysis that can be done. We can work with you to uh, analyze your billing files from UPS, from FedEx, and see where we can target some particular shipments and different types of packages that you may be shipping where you could be leaving money on the table. In one instance, uh, after the analysis, we saved a customer over $400,000 a year in their freight spend. As I mentioned, e-commerce, another growing area of the business. Um, we have you know, more and more requests coming from customers that are selling online, either through marketplaces like eBay, Amazon, Etsy, or through their own shopping cart. Uh, so you may have multiple uh, places that you're selling online. Starship has the ability to either connect directly to the e-commerce site and ship off of those uh, transactions, or more commonly, we can pull data out of Macola. So we have uh, the e-commerce platform and the order number, and I'll show you that during a demo where we can pull that data out of Macola. That can indicate to Starship that while it's a Macola order, the source came from, say, Amazon or from your WooCommerce shopping cart. We can simultaneously update the results in Macola as well as hit the APIs for the e-commerce site and put the status over there so you have uh, the order marked as being fulfilled, put the tracking, the detail over on the cart. So if you're pushing your customers to the online platform to look at the status, uh, we'll be able to update that there. So we'll have visibility to all the uh, transactions and the activity on that order. And with that, we're going to switch over to the demo. Give me one sec here, folks. All right, so here is the Starship client. This is where 
The majority of the activity would take place uh, during your day out in the warehouse. Uh, the client um, basically replaces the UPS World Ship or the FedEx Ship Manager solution, uh, but then ties in all of those carriers together. So you have the two modes of transport here. On the parcel side, you have your UPS and FedEx, DHL, Postal, any of those regional carriers. We also have a user-defined option that could be used to set up either local deliveries, will call pickups, uh, any type of uh, custom carrier that you want to add into Starship there. That can be done with the user-defined option. And that's triggered coming out of McCullough off the ship via code. We also have rules in Starship that can uh, take the decision out of the hands of the operator. So if you want Starship to enforce your business rules and make that carrier selection for you, we can automate that process through some logic. Next to that, you have the freight carriers. That has all the various LTL and common carriers that we have. Uh, over 20 different options available for LTL uh, with Starship right now. When you're ready to ship, uh, similar to ship gear, you'll be working off of say a pick ticket or a printout of the order. If you have a barcode on that paperwork, you can just scan in the order number here. Instead of that keyed import box, uh, you have that tethered over here to the left-hand side of the screen where you can enter or scan the transaction. You also have the ability to do a lookup on the McCullough orders, like on the spyglass here. And that'll give you a view of all the pending transactions. If I click here, this is basically, basically like a spreadsheet view of all the orders. You can pick and choose which fields you want to sort on in that view, resequence them. You also have filters. So if you want to drill down into a subset of data, narrow down that view further. This also offers you the ability to batch select, so we can select all of our orders and we can process them together in a batch. So if we have that packaging and uh, weight defined, uh, we can run them through without having to handle each transaction or you can click individual orders here as well. When we bring the transaction in, Starship will fill in all of the order header information over here. So you're starting at the top, you have your company you're connected to. You can toggle between different data sets of financials and McCola. Ship via code will translate over to the carrier and the service level. You can override that here if you give the user permission to do that, or you can lock down that field. Uh, billing preference, collect third-party billing can be brought over as well. So if you want to assign the charges to your customer's account, you have the ability to do that off of the McCullough database. Typically, we plug that information into some extra fields and map that over. Time and transit will show up over here. Uh, you have the return address. We call them senders here. So similar to profiles in WorldShip, we have different entities that you're shipping on behalf of. So if you have uh, blind shipments that you're doing on behalf of someone else, or you have different business units, you can set up all of your return addresses here. That can also trigger um, paperwork to print with a specific logo or a digital signature and you also have multiple accounts that could be associated with each of those different senders here ship to address as we bring that over starship offers address validation as a standard feature across the board with all of your carriers so a little green checkbox here indicates that we uh, validated the address as it came over we're checking the city state and zip you can add the zip plus four if you want to apply the standardized postal formatting the street address, the suite, the apartment number, and probably most importantly, the zone here. So we'll catch that if it's a residential address, a rural area, a commercial zone, and any of the additional surcharges or accessorial fees that apply to that shipment, we'll capture those right up front, clean up the address, and then you're capturing all the fees that would be associated with the shipment if you're riding the freight back into McCullough. We can also give you an exception report in our dashboard for any of the addresses that have been corrected. So you can go back into Synergy or your CRM and make those adjustments there. Starship has a packaging database here. So it has all of the various carriers packaging that they distribute, but you can add in your own custom containers as well. Each of those can have a unique name. You can define the type of package that it is. We also have the length, width and height or dimensions. So that's crucial if you're Doing those larger type shipments that are lightweight. Um, also another area where the post office could help you, um, the cubic pricing. We also integrate with Cubiscan scales. Uh, those can scan the exterior dimensions of your products 
as well as um, weigh the package at the same time. Um, that can populate the length, width, and height. You can also key that in here or select a box from the drop down. We also integrate with all your standard hardware that comes with your UPS or FedEx system. So no need to change out the printer and the scale. You can plug those right into your Starship application. One big difference I mentioned was the items. So coming out of McCullough, we have the product information here. This allows us to do a packing list. We can also split up items if we have multiple quantities of product, put them into different containers. Uh, you can see I have the e-commerce part number over here. We've mapped that in so we can trigger that on our shopping cart. Update that over there. Rate shopping across carriers is available here. And that will list out all of the various options available to you. As you can see here, it came in as UPS ground, but uh, we could save a couple of bucks here and get it there faster if we sent it by priority mail. So we have the option of switching that here on the fly and we'll rate each of these from the cheapest down to the most expensive. You can also sort by transit time or alphabetically by the carrier. We'll go ahead and stick with UPS on this. You can also put in the date certain time and uh, the date when it needs to be there by and that'll filter out any of the results that can't make that transit time for you that carrier rate shopping and selection process could also be automated through rules so you can set up the system to basically pick that for you automatically all of your special services are here um, on the uh, shipment level also on the package level so any of those can be triggered from extra fields on the customer card coming out of McCola as well or any fields in the order header. If we're happy with the transaction, it's packed up, it's ready to go. Come up here into the toolbar, have my uh, tools in order to process the shipment. You also have keyboard shortcuts for all of your common program functions. F5, ship and process, that'll complete our transaction, push that data back into McCola, and then the cursor will come back over here so we can scan the next order. Take a quick look back here in McCullough at the results. You have options of putting the detail into the order header or the line item comments. We'll put the information in here. This can be fully customized. So if you're sim uh, very similar to what you're doing with ship gear, except you can expand that down to the item level and put some detail here so we can basically give you a packing list of the contents, quantity of product that went into a particular package. Uh, freight can also go into the freight field, or you have the ability to push that into the manifest table here. As you're doing parcel shipments over time, we'll continue to append that list over here as well. Starship also has a SQL extension, so that opens up options to get into uh, custom fields, flexibility, um, any other applications on the network that you want to merge with the out-of-the-box McColl integration. And that pretty much opens up anything to be uh, read from to capture data on the inbound side, or we can push results wherever you want them to go. So I mentioned, uh, you know, we do a lot with the items here. Starship does keep basically a mirror database of all your Macola part numbers for things that may not live natively in the item master in Macola. So we're going to match on your part number, and here's where you can set up packaging. This is basically good for prepackaged goods, case packs, where you sell a certain quantity of product and Starship can automatically assemble boxes for you. Uh, so in this case, we have 12 to a case, goes in this size box, and Starship can automatically pack those up. So you need to set up things like that in order to do the batch processing so we know the weight, the size, and how to pack those items. If we're working with a WMS, we could also capture that you know, right from the WMS on the handheld and then grab that in Starship. We'll match the part numbers on any of the freight properties, NMFC codes, descriptions for your bill of lading, freight class, so it knows how to rate those, international, um, country of manufacturer, country of origin, schedule B code description to populate your commercial invoice. If you have to file with ACE in order to retrieve an ITN number, uh, NAFTA paperwork, certificate of origin. So there's all these flags here set uh, for things that you typically have to manually select inside of WorldShip or Ship Manager. We're going to use all that item data to drive um, what paperwork should print, how you should declare those items, if it's considered hazardous, 
um, to automatically fill out that paperwork, print the right copies, the number of copies for you, uh, so you don't have to go in and manually select product information and maintain uh, those commodities within the carrier systems. So let's take a quick look on how we can do that for you. So this particular transaction, uh, we have it set up to go LTO. You can see I've defined packaging for those boxes. So everything came in pre-packaged. We also put it on a pallet because it's going uh, by a freight carrier. We always have the option of changing that here with the correct user permissions. It will calculate the freight. Uh, so you can have your cost plus any kind of handling. You have freight rules with a very robust uh, logic that can be applied to mark it up conditionally discount it in instances where you want to do calculations to calculate how much freight uh, would be applied to the particular sales transaction. So you can see our exposure here on the uh, freight is 270.56, but with the markup, we're going to charge them 311.14. Same idea here. We're going to give you a list of various LTL carriers that you can choose from. All the product information comes in over here and that's going to tie to your freight class so you know how to rate that as well as the commodity description to populate on your bill of lading. Go ahead and process that here. So same exact workflow for your freight as your parcel. We'll go ahead and take a quick look back in Macola here at the results. Put the same type of information in here except you have your bill of lading number your pro number for the freight carrier, as well as the uh, extra layer of packaging. You have the number of handling units or pallets recorded here. And then of course, we'll put the pro numbers in here on the manifest. Uh, Starship can retrieve bills of lading directly from carriers. Uh, so you have you know, the ability to get UPS or FedEx freight, bills of lading, any of those carriers that I mentioned, we have direct integration to, they can push back their formats. You have a uh, straight bill of lading, a VIX bill of lading, a master bill of lading. All of those are forms that are native to Starship. They can be manipulated with any kind of uh, formatting changes that you may need. Export documents like the commercial invoice, NAFTA paperwork, all that can be automated and driven off the Macola order, tying into your item records. A couple of other things I wanted to show you here quickly before the uh, half hour runs out. Uh, Starship does have an email notification. So if you're familiar with the e-notify option for ship gear, you also have that with Starship. This can be customized to have additional detail. You can have the items in there. Um, fully customizable with logos, any fields of data coming out of Macola or out of Starship that you want to populate, colors, fonts, the background, links. One of the cool things about doing it through Starship is you have access to attachments. So you can grab an attachment from an external directory or any of the shipping documents that Starship generates. Those can be PDF'd and inserted with the shipment. So a copy of the packing list, um, a bill of lading, an export document, anything that's generated out of Starship can be PDF'd and then automatically sent out through the e-notify option. Conditions can be set here as well to associate different email templates based on the customer, the product, trading partner, whatever the case may be. So hopefully if they're checking their email, you're proactively notifying the customer of uh, the status of the shipments. Um, cuts down on the number of inbound calls that you're receiving. We do give you some other front office utilities with Starship as well. Um, you do have the rate quote utility. Uh, this is useful if you wanna give quotes on the uh, order entry side. And we also have an API that could open up uh, the ability to link that into your shopping carts, into Synergy, other applications where you wanna see the rates. Dashboard also gives you visibility to the Starship history browser-based, doesn't impact your user licensing in Starship. Copy of the email will be here, the ability to track all of your packages. You can do lookups here using any of the McCola part numbers or uh, PO, invoice, order number, address fields. You can easily find the transaction. Your order header data will be here. Uh, packaging information with the tracking, any details about those particular contents. 
uh, the items and quantities, breakdown of the freight charges, and then any accessorials, any of those special services. So your insurance, your lift gate, hazmat, signature options, any of that stuff will show up over here. So you have kind of a more detailed view of that transaction in the front office versus just what's in McCola. So that's free to use for anybody in the organization. There's crystal reports built in here as well that can give you uh, an analysis of your freight spend over a period of time. Uh, you can get daily manifest reports if you need to reprint them from here. Um, on-time deliveries as well. We can do background tracking and give you a report of any uh, any shipments that showed up late. So you can take that, go file a claim uh, with the carrier. It's a really nice ROI option there for you. So we'll go ahead and wrap up the demo here. Thanks and have a great day.